I love poke bowls, but what about an abri poke bowl, which is a flame seared fish with a creamy sesame dressing? Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dude is behind the camera, and we are making poke bowls two ways today. And Dude will do a taste at the end to determine which one is better. That sounds amazing. I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. All written recipes are available to my patrons on Patreon, and you can find out more information below. We're gonna start with the sushi rice. I have heated up a quarter cup of rice vinegar in the microwave because I need to dissolve two tablespoons of sugar, along with one teaspoon of salt. Now you can adjust the seasoning however you want, whether you want it sweeter or less sweet, but the seasoned rice really does make the poke bowl. It's, would, it's the same as sushi rice, so what you get in sushi is a seasoned rice and not just plain rice. This amount of seasoning is for two rice cups of rice. This is the sushi rice I use. Sushi rice is, um, it's a short grain rice. Jasmine is skinnier and longer and it has a different texture and that's why sushi rice is different from um, well, regular rice that we use to eat Chinese food with because I find that jasmine rice absorbs the sauce better in Chinese cooking and Japanese rice just goes better with, well, Japanese dishes and Korean dishes. This is a rice measuring cup and it usually comes with your Instant Pot or a rice cooker and the measurements work with your rice cooker or Instant Pot. You know, the little lines that are in the Instant Pot on the liner. So the lines actually correspond with this measuring cup. So if you are cooking two cups, two rice cups of rice, when you add water, you add water to the, the two line, which is covered right now by the cooked rice, and that will give you the perfect rice. The two, actually, if you measure two of these cups of water and pour it in, it will give you the exact amount of water, which is up to the two level. If you don't believe me, you can try it yourself. I started off by rinsing the rice first until the water ran clear. Then I measured the water to the rice and let it soak for half an hour before I cooked it. When I cooked it, I cooked it for four minutes on high pressure and 10 minutes natural release. I'm just gonna break apart the rice in here because it'll be a little bit easier than in the bowl. Or you can even leave it in here. You know what, let's just leave it in here. It'll stay warm. I'm gonna pour all of the seasoning into the pot. On second thought, I do need to cool down the rice, so I will put it in a bowl. The rice shouldn't be cold, but it should be down to approximately room temperature. I know it sounds a little bit complicated for the rice, but it really isn't. Once you get used to making rice using the traditional method of using a rice cup, it really is not that complicated. But you can make rice however you normally make rice. But with sushi rice, I do recommend letting it soak for 30 minutes before you cook it. I'm also using a damp paper towel just to cover the rice so that it stays moist and doesn't harden while it cools. Okay, I'm just chopping up one green onion. I'm saving a little bit for garnish and putting the rest in the bowl. I'm grating about half a teaspoon of ginger. It won't be all of this, so I'm just gonna grate until I get the amount that I want. And if you like more ginger, you can always add a little bit more. 
With that leftover piece of ginger, don't throw it out. Just wrap it tightly with some uh, plastic wrap and throw it in the freezer. And then you can still grate from frozen whenever you need it. Okay, one teaspoon of sugar, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of rice vinegar, one tablespoon of sesame seed oil, just stir that up until the sugar is dissolved. All right, and that's the sauce for your poke, the regular poke. I am no sushi chef, so you all know that my knife skill maybe has improved a little bit over time, but they're still like, not great. So I am going to try to slice the tuna thinly. We'll see what happens. This is albacore tuna. It is sushi grade tuna and you can find it in the freezer section of your Asian supermarket. And so I, please people do not think that any raw fish can be used as sushi. Or yes, sashimi. it has to be sashimi grade. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna do the um, the thin slices for the aburi sushi first. The fish is still slightly frozen, so it's easier to cut. Like this slab is about a pound of tuna. So we're gonna use half of it for the aburi sushi. Just a reminder, you guys, that I am a home cook. I am not a chef. I've never been trained in any way to be a professional chef. So everything that I show you on the videos is just me trying new things. And the encouragement is for you to do the same, to just try. And this is what I'm doing now with this tuna. I bet any sushi chef watching me is probably just cringing. <laughs> My goodness, can you believe what she's doing to that fish? The rest is gonna be easy because I'm just going to cut it into small bite-sized cubes for the poke. And that is going straight into the sauce. And the soy sauce will also help to thaw the tuna. It's not completely frozen, but it is cold. Okay, we're just going to combine the tuna with the sauce and let it marinate. And if you can't find tuna, you can also use uh, salmon. And again, just make sure that it's sashimi grade. Or you can do a mixture of both, which we often do. Just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the toppings that we're putting on the poke bowl. We have an avocado. Can you believe that this is one avocado? They came giant this time from Costco. I think these are from Peru maybe, but usually I get six in a bag and this time there was only four in a bag, but you can see why they're humongous. I am also going to be using some masago, which is like a caviar that you put on top of sushi. And it comes in the freezer section like this. And I have to let it defrost a little bit so I can scrape off some of the masago to use, and then I put the rest back in the freezer. We're also using Japanese edamame beans, and they're essentially just soybeans that you can find in the freezer section. You can also get these in the husk, and uh, usually in a Japanese restaurant when you order edamame beans, they serve it with the husk on and you take the beans out yourself, which you can also do here, but why? They're already deshelled. Can't be bothered, Flo. <laughs> QP makes this great deep roasted sesame dressing that I found and it is delicious. You know, I don't buy a lot of condiments and pre-made sauces, but this was so yummy. I found this at Costco and we're going to be using this on top of our tuna. And if you didn't know, QP is the brand for the Japanese mayo that is the gold yes. standard. Yes, yes. All right, here we go. 
Oh, the seats are getting, whoa, the seat is getting stuck. I wish dude caught this on camera for y'all, but look, gong show flow happened. So it looks like the seeds got stuck in the nozzle and me being, you know, can't be bothered. I pushed a little bit too hard. And so now all the sauce is everywhere, but it'll be fine because we're going to scrape off some of the sauce and continue on. We have this handy little torch that just fits on top of a, a butane gas container. And it's perfect for using on, well, we use it for our sous vide steaks now, and it's just awesome. And it doesn't smoke up the whole entire kitchen. So you just want to lightly torch the top of the fish. I wish you can smell this right now. It smells amazing. You just want to cook the tuna just a little bit on top and it caramelizes the sauce as well and roasts those sesame seeds a little bit more. And it's just, oh, I can't wait to taste it. All right, I'm going to uh, assemble a bowl, a couple of bowls for dude for the taste, but you can pre-assemble like all the bowls for everyone at that you're serving, or you can just serve it like this and people can put whatever they want on it, which sometimes is easier. It's like a mini, mini taste. All right, this one I know is not going to burst everywhere. And this is the furikake. I don't know if you want it on this one. Oh, no, we'll keep it uh, plain. Keep it plain. Keep it simple. All right. Here it is, a poke bowl and then the abiri tuna poke bowl. All right, are you all ready for? The taste, sorry for the crazy eyes. Dealing with, uh, you know, my stomach's growling as we're finishing up the shoot of the food and the lingering aroma of the seared tuna is amazing. So let's not waste any time, shall we? Now what I enjoy about filming with flow. I know a lot of you guys in the comments say that, hey, you know, if you're looking for uh, another taste tester uh, and a cameraman, like l lots of volunteers out there. So, you know, if the Lord takes me home, then you guys can get in line with your applications, okay? <laughs> what I don't mention enough is that I really enjoy, uh, well, tasting the, the end product. And what leads up to the stuff that we film is uh, food that we're surrounded by locally and food that we tried before and food that we see on uh, Pinterest or on the web. And uh, again, this is not done in a test kitchen over and over again. So this is a perfected recipe. It isn't. And so this is a first time try. Oh, what should I try first though? The regular one? We should try the regular one first. I know Flo has done this before and it's always a winner with the fam unit. So let's get into that. I can't get everything in there. Let's try the fish first, okay? Mm, fish is perfectly thought out. That seasoning, that, that marinade, perfect. Got that acidity in there. And then you have the different textures with the mayo and the masago and the sliced green onion. Perfect. And the rice, perfectly seasoned. If you don't get the rice right, as a good foundation for a poke bowl or a sushi, 
it's just not gonna go well. Mm. I'm guessing this will have a cleaner taste because you just put the QP dressing and not the mayo. Oh dude, it's nice. You know what I like about it is that the QP dressing with the, um, what is it, roasted sesame dressing is already pretty awesome on salads, but that slight torching, you can see the sesame seeds that are in the dressing have been slightly torched, so they turn color, which is pretty cool. The, the fish torched to your liking and your preference, it really elevates the dressing that it's been sitting in and a cleaner taste overall with a fish. The dressing is a nice accompaniment and not overwhelming the taste of the fish itself. So with that, I don't know which one's better. I think today because it's, it's new and it's hitting my taste buds a bit differently than what we usually get with the poke bowl is that I deem the aburi poke bowl the winner of today. Just today. <laughs> awesome, dude. Thank mm. you. Mm -hmm. As soon as I figure out how to slice sashimi properly, I think it'll be even better. But it was, I did take a sneak bite and it, oh, it is so good, the aburi. I'm gonna keep trying new things and I hope you will too. To check out more simple, easy recipes, I will see you over there. <laughs>